With us now, Adam Smith, the uh, House Armed Services Committee ranking member and congressman. Uh, you might have heard part of our discussion there, but I did talk to Senator Chris Coons yesterday on this issue as to whether support for Israel is waning, particularly among uh, the Democratic uh, leaders. Uh, I, I want you to respond to this. This was from Chris Coons yesterday. Look, I would not abandon, abandon Israel. Uh, I would not abandon uh, the defense of Israel against their enemies in the region, um, particularly in the face of an imminent strike by Iran against Israel. Uh, if that no, no, were to I, with all reality. respect, sir, that's not what but I, I would asked. Say, if they go into Rafah and do this, would you, would you say, all right, that's a game changer, Israel? We told you not to do it, and you did. I would be willing to put conditions on the delivery of military munitions for that ongoing campaign. I would not sever ties between the United States and Israel. I wouldn't abandon right. Israel, but I would begin to condition the munitions that we provide for an ongoing campaign in Rafah. Congressman, let me ask you about that. Do you share that view, that if, 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 if Israel doesn't sort of dial things back, everything's on the table, including aid? Well, I... I don't share the view that we're going to cut Israel off. When you get into the issue of putting conditions on the military support, that gets really complicated. But I think all of that misses the central point here. The central point here is we want Israel to change the way they are conducting this war. Now, Israel has had a very aggressive approach from October 7th forward, and it's it's understandable why they reacted that way. It is not working to their advantage, and it is causing a devastating humanitarian crisis in Gaza right now. So our position is they need to change that. And I think the president's call for a ceasefire is a call for a temporary ceasefire, mainly focused around that humanitarian concern. Humanitarian aid's not getting in. Aid workers are vulnerable and, as a consequence, pulling back, as we've seen most, most drastically in the world's central kitchen strike. In order to get humanitarian assistance in, you need that brief ceasefire and a change in policy. And look, from the very start, Israel was like, we're going in. And they cite all kinds of examples of different wars against different groups where many civilians were killed. And I understand that argument. But given what Israel's trying to accomplish in Gaza, that approach is not the right approach. And that's what President Biden is communicating uh, to Israel right now. But didn't he go further than that, Congressman? I mean, there does seem to be a trend among some of your party colleagues. I mentioned Chris Coons, but I could also mention Senator Tim Kaine, who says, our current position toward Israel is just not working. Bernie Sanders, a, a long critic here, the way Benjamin Netanyahu is conducting this war, uh, that not another penny. Uh, we go back certainly to Chuck Schumer saying that elections should be held now. An unprecedented move for a U.S. senator recommending such for a sovereign nation, no matter whether it's run by a conservative or a liberal or anyone in between. Do, does any of that trouble you or the fact that Hamas celebrates this apparently in your face phone call that the president had with Benjamin Netanyahu? Yeah, what well, what really troubles me is that Hamas is not being held accountable in this discussion. And just you know, and there's a wide range of opinions here. And yeah, I, I don't want to link myself to other people's opinions. I want to say sort of where I'm coming from. And number one, I don't agree with not one more penny. Uh, Israel faces profound threats in the region from Hezbollah and Iran and others. Um, if we don't help them, their ability to deter those threats and stop the war from spreading will be significantly hindered. Um, but we is as i said israel's approach to the war right now in terms of the humanitarian crisis just isn't working it's not working for them and it's not working to get to a more peaceful resolution long term but the other part of it is leaving hamas completely out of this conversation as the un did that doesn't help the cause of peace either hamas doesn't feel any pressure right now the UN hasn't even been able to bring themselves to condemn Hamas, not just for the October 7th attack, but for the way Hamas is conducting this war, hiding behind but, civilians. But, you know, Hamas is civilians. winning this PR war, to your point, sir. No, and, no and Hamas is the one that celebrated yeah. this phone call. And Hamas is the one saying, look, we've got the yeah. U.S. potentially well, turning on Benjamin Netanyahu. Yeah, our perception is everything in the world, as you know. And the perception, I read a lot of the foreign press just this morning, even in the Financial Times today, talking about the administration taking an unprecedented move to step back from Israel. Are we stepping back, dialing back Israel? We have not. 
Um, and, and we are not. I mean, look, there's two separate things. Look, let me agree with you on one point. I think as Democrats or as anybody talks about this, you know, the UN globally, to completely leave Hamas out of the conversation is a major mistake. Because what incentive does Hamas have? Lost in all of this is the fact that Israel, with the U.S. support and pressure, has put offers on the table for a ceasefire repeatedly over the course of the last, gosh, six weeks now. And Hamas has turned down those offers for a ceasefire. So to not put pressure on Hamas is to make it harder to get it into this war. So I agree but with that. But we haven't that. done that. We're not, we're, not, we're not doing that. We're doing just the opposite. Well, Hamas agree. delegation is heading to Cairo right now on these ceasefire talks. Now, obviously, the president, uh, to his credit, is trying to urge the leaders of Egypt and Qatar to do their part in trying to influence Hamas to do something. But Hamas seems to be holding all the cards, and they started this whole thing. You know, I agree. We need to put more pressure on them. But the part that you have to agree with the president But again, on we're not, right? We're not. And, and your point is taken, Congress, but we're no, not doing I it. I heard you. I heard you. <laughs> I heard you and I agreed with you. Uh, but there's another part to this that we also need to get to. And that is the way Israel is conducting the war in Gaza, the way from the very start. I mean, remember, there were too many Israeli officials from the very start saying, you know, no food, no water, no uh, fuel, no medical supplies. And they took a very extreme position towards this. And we also need, as the major supporter of Israel in the world, to say, you need to change that. You, you, you cannot have a policy that completely ignores humanitarian assistance in Israel. Now, they've changed that. They began to try to move, but they have not moved quickly enough. They have not allowed enough humanitarian assistance in. And clearly, within Gaza, they have not offered protection to the humanitarian workers who are trying to keep the civilian population alive. And President Biden wouldn't be doing his job if he wasn't trying to get Israel to change that. Now, I agree with you. Hamas has been left out of this way too much. But you can't ignore the need for Israel to change the way they're conducting this war. What was clearly the game changer, Congressman, this past week with those World Central Kitchen workers, seven of them getting killed. And um, I, I do not mean to sound callous or indifferent to any of that, sir. But this happens in wartime. Innocent civilians, even aid workers, are killed. It's not right. It's not fair. It just is. But if that is the litmus test by which we might hold future aid to Israel, isn't that very risky? Well, look, I disagree with your premise. I disagree with somehow everything changed with World Central Kitchen. There was concern, and President Biden was putting pressure. His over-the-top comment came weeks ago. Look, there has been concern about the way Israel has been conducting this war from the very start. And yes, it, it, there's an enormous amount of pressure involved, and you're absolutely right. In a war like this, these things are going to happen. But I can also tell you that there are very specific things that Israel could do differently that would make it less likely that this would happen and allows them to, to still conduct their military operations. Their closing of so many corridors to allow humanitarian assistance in, their blocking assistance. I was at the Rafa crossing on the Egypt side about a, uh, two, three, a month ago, I guess it was now, and they routinely block aid from getting in for no clear apparent reason. They have a policy, and that's what happened in this case. You know, if you try to protect these aid trucks as they go through, Israel will not allow any armed guards to protect those trucks. If they see someone armed, they consider them a legitimate target, which means most of these aid trucks right. that are going in are being looted before they can get across the border. So these are policies that Israel can change, still conducting the war, understanding the risks that you clearly lay out. So there are things Israel can do different to say, All this right. is just war, we shouldn't bother Israel. I, I don't agree with that assessment. Well, you, well, you can, can under, you can understand their reticence and the Israelis' concern about people who might look like they're the genuine aid workers and those who might not, but such is war. But I do, but there's a thank cost you. to having this approach, too. Well said, sir. All right, I enjoyed having you on. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.